What's good guys, it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be answering some of your questions regarding hair care and hair maintenance. So let's jump right into it. So the first question I have here is, are these oil combination good for hair growth and the person listed olive oil, castor oil, coconut oil, amla oil and rogan badam which is also known as sweet almond oil? And to answer that question, yes, these oil combination are good for your hair. Whether you use it, um, you know, together or individually, or you mix some of them, you know, the combination is good because when you check out the um, individual um, properties of each oil, they all come with their own um, strengths as well as advantages etc so um if you mix the right oils together definitely it will be great for your hair not only your hair but your scalp as well so to answer that question yes but um don't feel like you have to use these particular um combination together all the time you can always try out other base oils that you can use on your hair so you have oils like a hoba oil which is um you know they say it's more close that oil is much closer to your natural sebaceous oils that you know your scalp secretes so um you can try oils like that if you want something more you know not not too heavy like for example castor oil etc so these oils are good but they are not the only oils out there that is good for your hair and not um, that combination is not the only combination that's good for your hair. It's always good to try new things or if you're happy with what works for you, you can certainly stick to what works for you. But also you can try new things as well to find out if your hair likes something even better. So the next question I have here is, what is the best measurement when mixing oils? Now, when it comes to mixing essential oils, and base oils like there is a specific way in which you are supposed to mix them because a lot of people out here be using um, a bit too much or probably a bit too little um, essential oils when they are mixing their oils now you guys may remember a couple years ago I did tell you guys that I had purchased a book um, this oil and uh, this oil <laughs> this book here um, it's called um, the Encyclopedia of Essential Oils and it tells you exactly how to mix the oils. So I'm going to read exactly from the book here and it says when you're using essential oils, you're supposed to use 20 to 60 drops of essential oil to 100 milliliters of base oil. Um, it also says 7 to 25 drops to 25 milliliters or three to five drops to one teaspoon. So that is the best measurements when you are mixing essential oil and a base oil. So when it comes to me mixing my oils, especially if I'm mixing just base oils, I usually go for the oil that I want to be more dominant. I will put more so that oil like as the higher percentage. Like for example, I would put, say I'm mixing, um, let me just throw out, three oils, right? Say castor oil, olive oil, and uh, coconut oil. I would more want to put more castor oil in um, than coconut oil, but because castor oil is so thick, I like to go with a little bit more uh, oil like olive oil as being the higher um, percentage, and then I'll put castor oil in the next, um, you know, next percentage being that second highest and then coconut oil being the least so i would say when it comes to mixing base oil just think which oil you like or how it works on your scalp like for example i love how castor oil works but because it's so thick i would put olive oil a bit more olive oil than castor oil but yeah so that's how i would mix my oils but when it comes to essential oils and base oils there is a particular way on how to mix it and i've just told you how to do it so I hope that answers your question, especially in regards to essential oils and base oils. But if it's just base oils, I would say just mix it according to what oil you would like to have as your main oil. 
So moving on to the next question I have is, can I mix peppermint oil with coconut oil? Yes, you can mix peppermint oil with coconut oil. You can mix whatever essential oil with whichever base oil you like. Um, so if you want to use peppermint oil and coconut oil and mix them together, go ahead and do that, but do it in the safe proportions that I've mentioned in the previous question, which was just asked. So yeah. Okay. So the next question we have here is what application tips would you recommend for applying oils to straight fine hair without making it oily? Do you recommend using an applicator or fingertips? Now regarding this question, especially if you have fine hair, I would definitely say use your fingertips because when you're using an applicator bottle, that can sometimes be, you know, when you're putting it on your scalp, especially, you know, I know this firsthand because I use an applicator bottle all the time. Sometimes it can, you know, squirt out a little bit too much oil and especially if your hair is fine, then that could be too saturating, you know what I mean? So I would say if you have fine, thin hair, definitely use your fingertips because you can control it. So I would say put some of the oil on your fingertips and obviously just massage it into your scalp, etc. And if you feel like you need a little bit more, at least you can control it as opposed to an applicator bottle, which can sometimes be a little bit excessive. Okay, so the next question we have here is, is it okay to wash my hair a couple days after applying these oils? You can wash your hair a couple days after, or you can wash it the same day. If you choose to do a hot oil treatment, there is no right or wrong way in how to, or how long you need to leave the oils on your head. Now, when I do a hot oil treatment, obviously I have it on my head for about an hour and then I wash it out, but then I will also apply it to my scalp again. And then probably in a week or to, definitely a lie in about two weeks, or so I will wash my hair again so you know wash it out a couple days after or even the very same day depending on how you use it because if you use it as a hot oil treatment more time you're gonna want to wash it off within an hour or two okay so the next question we have here is what oils are best for removing dandruff now this is a very interesting question here and I've always wanted to touch on this um, topic because I find a lot of people think they have dandruff when they don't have dandruff. However, if you are someone who have dandruff and you, um, you know, want to know the answer to that question, I'll definitely give you the answer to that question. But I just want to say, I've been hearing a lot of, um, hair content creators on here on YouTube talk about, oh, I've got dandruff, I've got dandruff. And I'm like, girl, you don't want to be calling dandruff on yourself because dandruff is a, a medical condition, right? And um, people get dry scalp confused with dandruff. So I'm going to tell you what I've found in my little research on dandruff. So what is dandruff? Now, dandruff is a mild and common form of seborrheic, I'm hoping I'm saying that word correctly, but it's seborrheic dermatitis. Dandruff is created by the mixture of oil and yeast. Okay, so if you've got any yeast infection or anything like that on your head or your scalp, sorry, should I say, then, you know, that being mixed with oils can cause dandruff so when people are talking about i've got dandruff no you just got dry scalp but some people may have dandruff and this is how you identify if you do have it or not um however in order to tackle um dandruff aside from the oils which i am going to list and um, mention to you um you can consider changing your diet um have a consistent hair care routine and also exfoliating your scalp will also help with getting rid of any of those dead skin cells on your scalp as well as doing a hot oil treatment like I mentioned um, in my previous um, question and also doing an ACV rinse. So you can actually tackle dandruff in other ways because not only one way will be effective. You have to tackle this in multiple, on multiple, um, using multiple, um, what you say, um, techniques. And according to my book, um, oils that you can use, obviously essential oils that you can use would include oils like West Indian Bay, Cade, Cedarwood, um, Eucalyptus, Spike Lavender, Lemon, Patchouli, I believe that is, Rosemary, 
sage so that could be clary sage or spanish sage and also tea tree oil also you could use bergamot oil garlic oil or thyme oil you definitely want to use oils which are rich in anti fungal um obviously anti-fungal anti-microbial um type of properties that will definitely combat this um um condition here so yeah so to to answer the question about the best oil to use i've definitely listed them out for you so you could go ahead and um you know use those oils in your base oils and also like i said exfoliating you can use a scalp massager which i'll link in the description below to help you remove um, any dead skin cells from your scalp so it's not just in your hair all the time so moving on to the next question we have do i have to add glycerin to my oils to prevent it from expiring and the answer to that is no you definitely don't need to put glycerin in your oils for it to um last longer um i did a q a um i can't remember how long ago it was but i'll definitely link it right here to answer your question in regards to the expiration of oils like Oils don't necessarily expire because if you think about it, the oils that you have in your kitchen, it doesn't expire like if you have it for a month or so, like sitting in your cupboard. If you open the oil, like if you buy those big cases of oils and you use it, it doesn't go off. Like oils don't go off. It only goes off if it contains any like water. So no, you don't need to add glycerin to make it last longer. And the final question that I'm going to be answering for you today is, can you share a video of your husband's beard journey has he seen any growth <laughs> now when i got this question i said it to my husband and he was just laughing like really somebody's interested in my beard i'm like yeah boy <laughs> but um it's definitely up to my husband i'll definitely run this one by him to see if he's really down because i mentioned this question before but um you know in regards to has he seen growth especially when i use my oils he has definitely seen growth the thing is he cuts his beard now so he keeps it quite low this guy can grow a beard like when we first met he had his beard down to here and i was like dude your beard is a little bit too long i mean i love beard but that's a little bit too long so he keeps his beard a little bit more shorter so he's definitely seen growth and you know he was seeing growth when i was using the oils that i mix okay so that's it for today i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did then please be sure to like comment share and subscribe if you are not already subscribed so until next time i will be right back here with another video